Today we've gathered grade 11 and grade 12 students and also grade 11 parents to tell you a little bit more about the IB program. Um, so I'll start off uh, with some statistics about our school to assure you what are our aims and expectations and aspirations for these students. Um, BSS uh, this year 100% of the students gained their diploma. And our expectation for the current grade 12 is that the, the results will be the same, 100% of students to receive the full diploma, which may seem like, surely this is a given, right? We send our children to school to get the IB diploma. This is actually a huge achievement, to receive the full diploma. And it's scored out of seven points. And a five and above is considered more than satisfactory. This is considered above satisfactory. Four is a passing grade. And you can see from our results that in most subjects, 100% of students scored a five and above. Not only a five and above, you think, oh, we're just going to be satisfactory good. We also have um, sevens in English, business, ITGS, French, Spanish, B and Spanish have an issue. Put this in perspective that out of the 170,000 students who sit the IB uh, last year, only 7% of candidates worldwide gained sevens. So you can see that even we had such a small cohort, they were seven students, we were able to get uh, way above this statistic as a school. And where are our students going? For the current grade 12, this slide is, is for you mainly uh, to see where we, our students are already. Uh, you know that we've sent students to China, uh, to Milan, uh, but this year we sent really globally. Let's say they went to the UK, USA, we have in Scandinavia, we have in Europe, we have here locally in Bulgaria. Those students who are in Bulgaria have gone to some of the best universities for fine arts, we have fashion design, and uh, we also have a student attending med medicine. So why I start with this, and not all of the things about the IB program? The BSS IB program is really tailored to, to all of you students, and for your students, for your children. You can see here, what they're studying are not simply the, um, the mainstream subjects, but they're also music production, fashion design, sports management and psychology. So you'll see now in the presentation how we really tailor our program to make sure that everyone's individual needs are met. And I hope that grade 12 would then see that actually, yes, we do do that in our school, uh, despite the current restrictions. So um, this is the agenda for today. I'm going to try and uh, keep it as brief as possible and I'm conscious that uh, we have work to do, parents and students. But We'll talk about what is the IB program, uh, how we prepare students for 21st century skills, what are our school expectations, and what questions do you have. Uh, I'll start with an introduction. This is Miss Emmy. Not everyone will have met her. Uh, students will have, of course. Uh, she is uh, the academic dean here in the school. She's also the business management teacher. Hello. And the extended essay coordinator. So she's an essential person. Please come and take a seat. Uh, and I'm Naomi, so I'm the IB coordinator and also the Angli English language teacher. Uh, and both of us will be uh, presenting today. So, uh, the learner profile. Uh, grade 12 will know very well what is the learner profile. And probably the first time they saw this, they thought, what a nice little picture with some jigsaw pieces. This is so sweet. But this is really the central part of the IB program. Uh, they study a lot, they learn a lot, but the learner profile is what we really want to instill those 21st century skills to make our students successful. How do we do it? Uh, we attend a lot of international competitions. This year, we have an Immerse Education essay competition, which can gain students um, scholarships in the UK, or virtually in the UK, we'll see, uh, to attend summer schools there. Uh, we also have the COVID competitions, and later I will show you two events that are coming up suitable for grade 11 and 12, and the World Scholars Cup, something that is, has become integral to um, our school life, where students learn how 
students debate, public speak, uh, creatively write. Um, so these international competitions are part of how they develop things like risk taking, um, how to be good communicators. So these are really essential parts to the program. We also develop the learner profile through our school events. Now, uh, we're really happy that we are here back at school. Uh, this was part of the thing that we all felt we lacked when we had to do the homeschooling. Uh, we, uh, we benefited well with the virtual learning environment for academics, but the school events, we really missed this. Here we have a science fair that some of the older students put on for younger students. And our facilities also there are to allow students to really develop independence um, and really to take their learning in their own hands. And the other thing in the learner profile we have that they should be caring, that they should be principled. Um, and working with the community is also something that we pride our school in. Last year, the grade 12s made a fantastic project uh, about making compost and raising awareness about the environment. They, uh, they went down to the lower school, they presented it to the smaller children, they, uh, now in the uh, Ekaterina Nenshva, they're going to have a small garden made with this compost. These small projects teach the children a lot more than simply to be caring about the environment. Okay? It teaches them to be good communicators, to be risk takers, to put themselves out of their comfort zone. Um, and through these, um, uh, working with the community, we've also worked with young adults and children with learning disabilities, physical disabilities, and this is something that really, I think, uh, has been something that always comes out of our CAS presentations. This is the things that you will remember as students, the time when you did some sort of community project. Um, so this, if you like, the learner profile is about developing the person. Uh, it's linked with all the classes as well. In the lessons, we talk about the learner profile. Uh, in English, for example, we have a lot about global issues, and uh, this is really integral to the program. Miss Emmy is now going to talk a little bit more about the structure of the academic program. Okay. Now, uh, the International Baccalaureate as a program was organized around uh, 1960 in Switzerland. Our main purpose was uh, actually to have more educated people young people to become more educated, so uh, the goal is world peace. So as you can see here, uh, practically this model was changed a couple of times. At the beginning it was a hexagon because they were talking about six areas of study and they were trying to develop young people as balanced as possible and that's why one, uh, one of the uh, learning profile attributes is to be balanced. Okay? So here we have the IB program, we have the IB program and after we have international mindedness. Because this baccalaureate program is international around the world, we have uh, in many countries IB schools. And in these schools we have people from all over the world. That's why international mindedness is at the bottom. Then we go to the six academic areas which are experimental sciences, language acquisition, studies in language, individuals and societies, mathematics and the arts. After that, we go to the core of the program, which is the theory of knowledge, the extended essay, and here, the creativity, activity and service, the CAS. Okay, so as you see, everything is intertwined in one thing, because we want these students to become balanced, not only academically, but also to have some uh, social activities, to be uh, artistic, to become talented in other, uh, in other areas. Okay, can we, uh, all right. So the subjects that are being studied, as I said, they are divided into six academic areas. And these six academic areas are practically what can be studied in university. Now the beauty of the program is that a student can choose let's say, uh, not mandatory, but it is required to choose from each group one subject. Though, in case they don't choose from the arts, they can have two subjects from another group. So here we have, as you see, group one is studies in language and literature, uh, group two language acquisition, then individuals and societies, this is the humanities and social sciences here, 
We have then experimental sciences, which is the physics, uh, chemistry, biology, and computer science. It was a new thing, new, new, like for the past 10 years, perhaps, <laughs> that new. Uh, then mathematics. And the last one, the arts, uh, where uh, artistic talent is developed. Uh, okay, now the structure of the program. A student is required to take minimum three subjects, but up to four from the higher level subjects. Now, higher level subject is being taught at 240 hours for the two-year program. Uh, so I'm going to say now, but after we are having it again in the presentation, that's why we require maximum 5% absences. Because uh, we have to... Uh, acknowledge when the student is present in school and after we are signing documents that each student had completed 240 hours, let's say, for the higher level subjects, for each subject, I mean, and 150 hours for the standard level subject. Of course, higher level subject is being taught with uh, more depth and breadth of the subject, uh, while standard level is a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, less uh, demanding. Uh, so six subjects, as I said. Uh, practically, uh, rarely students have four subjects from the higher level, and usually uh, this is because it's of the requirement of certain universities to have the three sciences when they enter university, perhaps for medicine. Okay, this is the only way when uh, we allow somebody to take four subjects at higher level, though it's extremely difficult for the student. Uh, now, each subject doesn't matter if it is a standard level or a low uh, or a higher level subject. It requires coursework and uh, lectures, of course, in class. Now, the coursework is something like the experimental sciences. They have uh, laboratory work, which is going to be assessed by the teacher. In the other subjects, this is called internal assessment. And this coursework is also being assessed by the teacher, but moderated by uh, external examiners. Okay, so uh, this is one of the difficulties, as I said, for the experimental sciences to have the three sciences because the student should complete uh, three coursework with three different laboratory work. Uh, then we have the, the core subjects. They are being, let's say, not taught, but they are being discussed throughout the two years program. And this is the TOK in which they have a mandatory essay at the end of the two-year program, plus they have a presentation, uh, exhibition this year, exactly this year the program is changed, so it became an exhibition. Uh, the internal assessments I talked about, so I, okay. Uh, then we have two types of assessment, which is internal and external assessment. The external assessment is at the end of the second year, and we call it the May session. Now for us, for above the equator, it's the May session because we finish school in, in May, let's say. While for below the equator, their uh, exam session is in November. Now the good thing is that for us it's uh, May session, but uh, our students can go also November session in case somebody wants to raise his grade, or they need a, uh, let's say they didn't pass and they want to go on another, uh, uh, to take another exam, okay? So there is a possibility of a retake, which is November for us. Uh, the external examination, uh, usually it's for per subject, in case they have two papers, it's two days, in case there are three papers, it's three days. Uh, so it is around a month, it starts around the 30th of April, 1st of May, and it ends toward the end of May. So uh, grade 11 are going to have their examination in 2022, while grade 12, they're going to have examination next May in 21. Okay? Everything that has been studied from this September until May 22, uh, they're going to sit for examination. Uh, now, uh, here a small, let's say, description of each subject or each group uh, for the subject. So this is for English language and literature. They are going the areas of exploration. I don't know, Miss Nomi? Yeah, I mean, this presentation you will receive. Yeah. So uh, you will be able to see in brief what the students will be studying in English language. 
Uh, it's very much arranged around concepts. Actually, the whole IB program is around concepts. Um, these kind of big abstract ideas that allow them to make links between their uh, outside world and, and what they're learning in school. Uh, we study a range of literary and non-literary texts. Uh, and they're very much um, situated within global issues. And this is true of most of the IB subjects now. With the new curriculums, this is the focus. Uh, we're using a lot of electronic resources, uh, though we do have a textbook we use from time to time in the class. Uh, the language B, or ab initio. So there, there are three levels of language. Um, higher level language B, standard level language B, and ab initio, all challenging and demanding in their own way. They are arranged around five main themes, okay, so in a similar way, and you see those same um, ideas coming out of the IB, IB topics and themes, identities, sharing the planet, so again, very much related to the idea of world peace that was the IB's uh, driving force. Okay, business management. Uh, however, when you studied uh, business in university, you can see that uh, practically, uh, Roughly, these are the areas of business somebody can study in university. Okay, so we are going into business organization environment, human resources, finance, marketing, and operations management. Uh, by the way, some of the higher level material is really very demanding. Okay, in some universities, even it is given as uh, part of the master's course. So, uh, uh, all of our program, we have certain things that are really demanding, and uh, I mean, need studying, okay? Now, the ITGS, uh, interestingly enough, this subject uh, belongs to the social sciences, and it has uh, a lot of ethical side. As we said, we have the six concepts, and one of the concepts is ethics. So here we have a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, critical thinking development of the ethical side of the um, information technology today. And they're going into different strands, as you see, social and ethical significance application to specify scenarios, and IT systems. Now, uh, they have a big case study, which is being released now. And this case study, I mean, for uh, grade 12 students. So they are going to go through the case study, and this is the specified scenario, uh, one of the strands, and they're going to discuss uh, what uh, uh, is in the case study, and after one of the exams, one of the papers is going to be based on that. So uh, all of our studies, it's real life situations practically, which is a direct relation to the world. Uh, then sciences, as we said, we have uh, uh, we are offering all the sciences, and uh, now, generally speaking, uh, what we teach them in sciences, uh, skills. All right, mainly skills, because again, you can study on your own. Uh, but we are teaching them skills, we are developing uh, the critical thinking, analytical skills, uh, and one of the most important things which later on is going to be shown in the core reflection. Because nowadays uh, we go a lot to the reflection part of everything. So here we are teaching them, okay, sorry. no, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, the sciences, uh, following the scientific method practically is one of the ways to go into the critical thinking and analysis. Uh, mathematics, uh, I'll just read the topics, I'm not mathematics teacher. <laughs> so number and algebra, functions, geometry and uh, trigonometry, statistics and probability, and calculus. Now, uh, I mean, uh, whoever, uh, as you see the program, it's uh, uh, very obvious. Uh, it is divided into two different uh, subjects, uh, but practically a lot of universities do accept for engineering standard level of no matter which type of mathematics. So there is no um, problem for the student to take mathematics as a standard level. They can still go to engineering school. That's number one. Number two, a lot of universities uh, practically acknowledge the grades in mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology. In case a student has a six or a seven, they give them credits for the uh, for the fact that they got six or seven in the official IB exam. Okay, so uh, this is 
a great thing. One thing also about maths, what we've decided this year is we'll start everyone with standard level because I know there are some people with question mark for higher level maths. Uh, there are some people who are definitely for higher level maths, Joshua. <laughs> but um, so we'll start with the standard level material and then we will decide whether we do uh, intensive higher level in the some weeks in the summer or in the second year. But for the moment, everyone will start with standard level because the mathematics that everyone studies in different schools is always very different. And they come maybe very good in maths, but they struggle in the first few months. So we, in, we want to give them the opportunity to develop in the mathematics because this is a good option for students who are good in maths to receive a six or a seven. Uh, only one thing to mention here, uh, already at grade 11, some of you might have a certain idea where you want to go to university. In case it is an American university and uh, uh, SAT uh, one is required, where math is required, as you see, calculus is being studied because calculus is part of the set one and set two uh, subject uh, exams. So please talk to the teacher uh, in case you want to have the set exams so we can see uh, what can be done in order to prepare you also for the set examination. All right, uh, whoever has in mind either United States or any American university around the world. All right, because of the calculus. Uh, group six, the visual arts. Uh, it has been very interesting because uh, for the actually for the four years that we had uh, ID program, we did have students uh, who were in the arts program. Now the arts program is not uh, a typical drawing. Arts program is also developing skills. It's not only the drawing skills, it's not only the uh, making skills, but it's also writing skills. They are, start, uh, they are studying sort of history of arts. They are developing a special portfolio. And uh, so they work on both sides. Uh, students do work on preparing their own exhibition, and you probably saw Miss Naomi was kind enough to put some of the um, art exhibition from our students. At the same time, they are studying uh, different uh, uh, artists, a uh, favorite to them artists, I mean, and uh, they are developing certain studies on their own, which they record in a portfolio. This portfolio is being sent then to an examiner who is examining it, and this is how they get their grades from the portfolio and from the exhibition. Okay, so it's a, a very uh, enriching program for whoever is interested in arts. Uh, this is the link uh, to which uh, you can find uh, more details about the subject groups, because I, I was just giving a brief uh, uh, yeah, overview of the subjects. Okay, so this is how, where you can find uh, more details. And most of the subjects, the scientific subjects, uh, also business, TRK, uh, they have this resource cognitive. So I encourage parents to ask your uh, children to show you cognitive because that, this is a digital textbook, uh, interactive textbook with uh, tests, quizzes, it also embedded there, very nice. And here you'll see exactly what they're doing. So this is a nice way for them to show you what they're learning. Okay, and this is our core. Uh, we have been talking about the core and some of the, uh, uh, some of the subjects included inside from the beginning of the presentation. You saw some of the pictures which were related to the CAS activities our students have. So CAS is creativity, activity and service. Okay, now uh, creativity is related to art and anything creative that is being done by students. Uh, creativity they had, for example, uh, first thing that comes into my mind, they were organizing uh, uh, a bazaar for the International Women's Day and they created some flowers uh, themselves. I mean, they did the flowers and after they were selling them to the uh, school community uh, because of the International Women's Day. So, so children can uh, buy flowers to, for their mothers and after the money went to a certain organization, Cedars Foundation, I think, uh, uh, the, the money that were gathered. Uh, then activity, uh, we have certain, let's say, sports activity and uh, exercising. Uh, students are required to have a certain number of hours for each of the strengths of the CAS, for creativity, for activity, and for service. 
service is then service to the community. It can be uh, helping uh, to Miss Naomi and myself when we have to do something in school with some other grades so they can help us. Uh, it can be organizing different events and stuff like that. So sometimes when we have the barbecue parties, international days and stuff like that, uh, students are helping us. So this is the, the service. Uh, another uh, part of the core is the theory of knowledge. Theory of knowledge is taken as a subject. This is uh, not about a certain uh, academic subject, but it is to, they have to start asking the question, how do I know that? Okay, to learn about knowing, uh, to have the difference between uh, personal knowledge and shared knowledge, what does it mean personal knowledge, what is shared knowledge, what are the most common questions they want to answer and how to wonder about the given things like uh, mathematics, like sciences. So it is a very uh, interesting study of uh, developing certain critical skills. And the extended essay, extended essay is known to be the culmination of the IB program. It's a 4,000 words essay where students for the first time are writing a big academic piece of writing. It, uh, it is being done, uh, students are choosing one of the uh, subjects that they are interested in, and they make an independent research about the subject. Uh, one of us uh, is going to be their consultant for the essay. Uh, we can spend with them uh, from three to five hours with the student, and uh, we give advice uh, to how the essay progresses, Okay, uh, then uh, this essay is being given to uh, an examiner and it is being corrected by an uh, external body. Now, uh, just uh, to say that at the three of them you saw that there was a reflection. Uh, we were talking before that, as you see, each one is related to reflection in the core. And we said before that reflection is one of the important skills we are developing in our students. So just very briefly, a little bit more about CAS program. This is something that we want to emphasize, especially now at the beginning of the school year with the students, uh, for them to start thinking about interests that they have. This is an area where they can develop things that they are not taking as subjects, such as visual arts, perhaps, or something uh, related to sport. Uh, this was one event that we did at the beginning of uh, the year in the previous uh, students. They organized a sports day for children with uh, physical and learning disabilities alongside the British uh, Royal Air Force. So there were many different elements to that of organization, executing, presenting, and uh, it was uh, yeah, a wonderful event where two of the students, they, they were the, the organizers, they started all the races, and they organized the ARIA, which I think is, is very uh, cool thing uh, that they did. Uh, this is something that we try and do every year with Miss Bori takes uh, with some of the students and teachers and they go and make bread with people who are visually impaired. They bake it in the dark so they have this experience uh, of what exactly it feel, what exactly it feels but they get an idea of how it may feel for them uh, and this is always a very enlightening moment and links very nicely to uh, what they're studying in theory of knowledge uh, especially about what we know through our senses. And here's a nice picture of the current very top. <laughs> um, what I'd like to say is, well, CAS is something that they must pass. Okay, they are required. Uh, there are certain elements that Miss Bory outlines to them. Uh, she's the CAS coordinator, including a portfolio of evidence, including a project. These things have to be completed. And I, as the coordinator, tick a box that say pass or fail. And this year we had children who had their diplomas held back because they hadn't completed the CAS requirement. Um, CAS is central to the IB program. It's not just something we do for fun on a Friday afternoon. So even if it's the last two lessons of the day, I don't want to hear on a Friday, but Miss, we just have CAS, okay? Because I can hear it's already echoing through the, through the corridors. Um, where there's additional credit for it is if children decide to link it with the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Uh, there is more information in these uh, lovely BSS bags that Miss Stacey has provided. There are, there's a flash drive in there, and inside that flash are all the policies 
uh, the presentation, but also information about the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Students have been told about it as well. Uh, this is a standalone qualification. Nikki has achieved silver, I think, right, already. There are three levels to it, and it is well recognized worldwide, especially in the UK. Can I just uh, mm -hmm. uh, say something about the CAS and uh, that they, they are saying, oh, it's Friday, I don't want to go. Now, uh, when, you, uh, when you are accepted in universities, university already receives uh, your grades from school. So they do know your academic achievement. They get the transcripts, and it is written in each subject how much did you get, how much did you get in school from, uh, by the way, the transcripts are from grade 9 to 12 in some schools, in others are from 10 to 12. When uh, some universities require interviews with you, and they are going to interview you about your activities, nobody is going to ask you about the achievements you have, academic achievements in school because already they have the information. So nobody cares about your grades at the point of interview. They want to see what type of person you are. Do you have the skills actually in you? Are you a person that cares about the society? Are you a person that helps the community? Do you play sports? They want to see team players. They want to see uh, uh, that you're uh, really with the spirit to help everybody. Okay, so this is what they want to see in you. They don't want to see a person who has straightforward seven and just did, uh, sits at home and studies. No, far away from it. Okay, we don't want such kids. That's why uh, the IP program is so rich because a big part of the development of the students is the gas program. All right. We mentioned about the extended essay, but Ms. Emi will just explain. This matrix becomes something that we're constantly <laughs> referring to. Is it three points? Is it two points? Uh, yeah. Ms. Emi will... Uh, this is... Uh, okay. Sadly enough, <laughs> from 2016, uh, they changed the whole thing with the extended essay from 2016. Before that, extended essay was just a piece of academic writing, 4,000 words, etc., etc. From 2016, it became a failing condition. So, what it means, let me, uh, I don't know how to show it, probably. Okay. On one side, you have the theory of knowledge, and, or the TOK. So the theory of knowledge, they also have to write an essay. On the other side is the accepted essay, and if we start crossing them, now there is a beauty of the system on one side. If a student gets an A in theory of knowledge and an A in extended essay, this student gains three points. So the maximum grade is six subjects times seven, which is the maximum grade, is 42. Plus the three gift points, it's a 45. Okay? Uh, so this year we had students, for example, with a 29 who got the three bonus points, ended up with a 32, yeah. which is a nice score. These three points are really, they are not easy points, but they are very, very, uh, they make the difference between the very high score and the mediocre score. They are essential. TOK extended essay. Uh, just to mention that 32 is a requirement in most universities in UK. Uh, McGill, no, McGill I think is 37, I'm sorry. Okay, but 32 is one of the minimum required so, uh, uh, scores in university. So if you had a 29 plus 3, I mean it, it's really a great thing because you get the minimum required score. Uh, so as you see, this is how you have to look at it. B and B it's two points, for example, C and C it's one point. And the failing condition, everything that it's written, this is failing condition, it's when the student gets an E, grade of E, so this is grade E from here, grade E from here, it's a failing condition. One E on one of the S's is a failing condition. This is what I said, that it, it was a new thing that started in 2016. So any E in either TOK or extended essay leads to not awarding the IP diploma then you have to be really very careful about deadlines and these essays. The good news is, in our school, last year, 100% of students got A to C grade, which was a huge achievement, including one student 
getting full marks for their extended essay, and 7% of students gained A in the extended essay, mm -hmm. only worldwide, and 83% of our students scored A. So we have an extended essay coordinator, but we also have extended essay supervisors. Um, we, it's normally me and Miss Emmy and a few in the sciences, but um, this is something that we have been very proud of and the students have done very well in so far. So we hope to continue this trend. Uh, as Miss Emmy mentioned, uh, your, may, your session will be 2022, um, but in the whole of the two-year program, the internal assessments are conducted and they are finished before the exam session starts, way before. Uh, there's a deadline in January and there's a deadline in February. So by March, all of the internal assessments are done, including the extended essay. Then they have a mock session, revision period, and the exam start last day of April, first day of May. So in order to help students in grade 11, we have an additional week at the end of grade 11, additional one or two weeks, in order to really make a good start to these internal assessments, because a lot of it will be done during the summer holidays. Please, parents, this is where your involvement comes to play. Summer holiday, next year. I know this one wasn't uh, hugely dynamic, maybe, but next one definitely shouldn't be. Okay, it's one, two. Let them study. A few weeks holiday, rest, enjoy the beach, but then they need to work on their internal assessments. We also come back one week earlier to see what they've done through the summer holidays and make the plan for the coming year because the last year of the diploma program, it goes like that. How many days we had left? Someone counted them. Six it's six months, but you counted the days, sounded not very so many to me. Around How many? Around 100. Around 100 days. And they have 100 days for their exams. Okay, this is nothing. That's what I mean. The first year, there's this temptation to sit back and relax. It's a two-year program. I'll study next year. There's no way to do this. From day one, it's really action. Uh, academic honesty, Ms. Emi? Uh, yes. Okay, academic honesty is one of the important things that uh, we are emphasizing in our school starting from uh, lower grades. Uh, what does it mean, academic honesty? Academic honesty is uh, recognizing the work of other people. Uh, this research, uh, to become a business teacher, is primary and secondary research. So whenever we have either the primary research, I just think of uh, Miss Iveta and her mom. So for example, Miss Iveta goes to her mom and asks her about the business she has and she has to write certain information. Once she writes the information, she has to acknowledge the source. The data was gathered by uh, interview with whoever, all right? Then the secondary research, when they have uh, the extended essay, for example, in most of the subjects is secondary research. Uh, everything they read from uh, books, magazines, newspapers, or any electronic source should be acknowledged and written. Okay? We are not saying that you cannot make a research. No, this is part of the program to teach you how to make research. But at the same time, you have to acknowledge uh, the sources that you have been using. Uh, we have a special policy, which is called the academic integrity policy. And each one of you, uh, we uh, are requiring uh, to sign this policy, uh, parents and students. Okay. So this is the one uh, policy that you actually have to acknowledge that you've read by signing it separately on a separate document inside your bags. There is this uh, document uh, and there is the policy as well. So please read the policy. It's a few pages. Uh, maybe your, your child can read it and summarize it to you but it is a central part of the IB, so much so that they insist that we have this whole policy for academic integrity. Uh, generally speaking, we have the software for uh, plagiarism, so uh, any written work that is being given to us, we are checking on the software. Uh, before sending uh, any written work to the IB organization, we are also checking, because you know sometimes, and I tell my students, uh, we are, uh, um, we become so much involved with certain definitions and stuff like that that if I start writing now, probably uh, a lot of things that I memorized by heart, it will become as plagiarized. 
So that's why if I write something, I also put it through the plagiarism thing. It doesn't mean that I did it on purpose, you know, but simply uh, sometimes you uh, remember a certain citation and you just write it. So that's why to make sure that everything is fine, we do um, uh, check everything with the uh, software. Okay. So we've summarized really about uh, developing the whole person, the academic side, and then all of this is really the main aim is to ensure the best uh, start in life, adult life. Uh, so we have uh, Miss Lilia here, who is our school counsellor, and as she works with, um, with this building mainly, she has a, a, a huge role to play in, in supervising and helping the students make choices about universities. Uh, we use, uh, we, we follow UCAS, which is the UK system as well, we help through this process, we've also helped through uh, the American application process. Uh, but where you can help as parents, lots of the time students come and they simply say, I have no idea what I want to do. And Ms. Lilia is there to talk things through, we are here to talk things through, but ultimately, you know, they're your kids and they want to ask their parents. So please, take some time in this first month, talk at home, discuss some suggestions, possibilities. Some of you are international traveling uh, families. Where will you be? Where will you be? Uh, where are the options for studying? Because this also comes into play that kids say, I don't know where we're going to be. I don't know where I'm going to be able to study. So this is something that really we ask for your involvement in uh, to ensure that the process can be fluid and we don't uh, miss the deadline because they also come around about now in the, in the second year. So it becomes a lot of stuff. If suddenly they're now scrapping around trying to figure out what they want to do at university, it's too much. So this is something also we like to get wrapped in the first year. Uh, we have an event coming up. The, one of the, let's say, new things are virtual fairs. I mean, this is wonderful for us as a school, being in Bulgaria, because it means that we can attend. Uh, COVID, as I mentioned before, we are a member of the school, Council of British International Schools, and they have organized a virtual university fair. Uh, Miss Bori has, uh, I believe, signed up with the students who are interested because I think it's at 5 o'clock. Yeah, it's uh, afternoon session starts at uh, 5 p.m. Bulgarian time. It will take three hours, but they can choose. I mean, I, we had an assembly time, we had this opportunity to have a look at the schedule. Universities know what they offer. So the students do have um, the link, and they can register for a certain uh, event after 5 p.m. Uh, the other event that's coming up, another virtual event, which may be interesting to some students, I believe it's been shared with you already, parents, um, not yet, but uh, this is another Kobe's uh, initiative. They do this leadership weekend normally you, you travel to it but now it will be done virtually uh it's a uh, it is paid but it's uh, an interesting opportunity for those students who really find themselves that they maybe want to go into something with management or they want to develop their leadership skills uh there's uh more information on the site miss bori gave information to the students and anyone who's interested please come and speak with me or miss bori about it and we can give some more information i think it was it was under 200 pounds uh, and it's over a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I believe. So um, obviously it will be an excused absence uh, for that <laughs> event. And our expectations. So these are things that we require to aid the students to be successful. They're not put there for any other reason. Uh, deadlines are something that uh, I stress here now with grade 12 as well. Um, they are there for a reason. We sit and we craft a calendar of deadlines, not simply to put it on the wall or to punish you. We put it there to make deadlines achievable. And as soon as you start missing one deadline, it becomes very difficult to manage all of your internal assessments, extended essay, TOK essay, presentation, university applications. So keep in mind, this calendar of deadline is half of your work done for you. If you stick to this deadline, it will help you a lot. I will be notified, Ms. Emmy must be notified if any extensions are to be given. Perhaps you've been ill, there is some unfortunate event that means you haven't met the deadline. We need to be notified by the teacher and we will then decide whether this is realistic or not. Number two, probably the most important one, positive attitude and an element of independent studying. Yeah, 
If you ask your kids at home, do you have homework, and they tell you no, they're lying. <laughs> From day one until the end, there is always something to be done. Whether it's a book to be read, some research to be conducted, some news to be browsed over, yeah, they must enrich their minds for the whole, let's call it 18 month period, okay? Thankfully, we have some very bright young individuals here who actually read the news, but they are expected to know what's going on in the world, okay? And who is the prime minister and who is the president? And uh, these kinds of essential pieces of knowledge, uh, they are expected to know this. Uh, attendance, we mentioned already. Now, we allow for 5% medical. If there becomes an ongoing situation, given the current pandemic, there will be maybe times when children have to stay at home. They can attend virtually. Ms. Theodora has invested in the most state-of-the-art cameras for grade 11 and 12 rooms. They're movable, so we can put them in different rooms. Mr. Joshua here, he started his learning uh, remotely. There were some hitches, but we managed it. So we are very much equipped to allow students to be at home where necessary. Best scenario, they're here. But if for whatever reason they're at home, this is not an excuse not to attend classes anymore. Yeah, this is something that we've been taught in the last year. Uh, participation in school life and events is expected. Yeah, we ask for really an I can attitude. We rely a lot of, in grade 11 and 12 for our school events. Um, attendance to out of school days and events, such as this thing that's happening at five o'clock. Yeah, it's after school, but this is the nature of the game. There are often things at the weekends. University fairs happen at the weekends, normally here in Sofia if we attend them. Uh, we may have some CAS events. So we ask some weekends, we give plenty of notice that students attend these things. Uniform, everyone's favorite word out of my mouth this week. We have a school uniform. Uh, we think that it's an essential part of a, a British school, but also of life. Every job that uh, someone will go to will have a uniform. And uh, when people see me outside of work, they will say, well, Miss, you look so different. Yeah, because this is not what I wear on a daily basis at home, okay? This is teaching skills, again, preparation for life. So. We ask that it is the school uniform, no uh, tracksuit bottoms on the bottom half. It can be alternative navy blue trousers or skirt, no jeans. Jeans seem to be the thing that creep in most in the high school. I don't want any more jeans. There is a detention. We hate to use it, but from Friday, anyone not in uniform this week will be put in detention. Uh, if anyone has another alternative suggestion for how we may discipline for the uniform, I'll be very open to it, but for this, uh, we, we keep a very firm line. Mobile phones are the other thing. They're a distraction. Uh, there are security issues there as well. Mobile phones are left on the front desk or not brought at all, and they take them at the end of the school day. They are locked in a cupboard on reception, and there's someone there all the time with the keys. If they need to make an emergency phone call, they're always welcome to use the school phones. And I mentioned this about the extra weeks of studying in June and September. So, final slide. These are the email addresses, perhaps the most important ones, but also all of your teachers' email addresses follow the same idea. First name uh, with initial. IB coordinator, academic dean, class teacher. Uh, Miss Boris, I probably should have put there as well, but I think it's on the CAS consent form. Yeah, so you have it there. Uh, in these um, bags, you have got a CAS consent form, which is basically just to say you allow students to attend uh, perhaps like baking uh, bread in the dark, and this may involve traveling on public transport, of course, supervised normally with a teacher, but there are some things that happen after school, and this is just a consent form for that. Uh, there is also the academic honesty that you have. Um, read this policy and the final one is for the students to sign uh, as well this is to say that I am allowed to release their work and to use their work uh, the IB is you know uh, they take that very seriously that I have actually asked permission to submit their internal assessments and share those with a wider community so those are three documents that I ask uh, you may sign them tonight and give them back tomorrow uh, it will be very helpful. And are there any questions? No, none at all? Okay, well, thank you so much.